Hello everyone, my name is Quimia Ross and today my message is called Exposing the Cuyahoga County Children Family Services for Trying to Keep My Daughter. Now we had a staffing meeting on Thursday where the facilitator Tanya Cross was there, um, the supervisor Rosalind Bailey was there, my caseworker Becky Sawyers, along with the foster parent Teresa Williams, my child's uh, therapist Elena Phillips, her uh, case manager Amanda uh, Clark was also there. Now we were discussing um, whether or not to send my, my daughter home and they asked her a question, does she want to go home? And my daughter stated yes. And they kept asking a question, are you sure? And like, just trying to manipulate her, her words. Now, they asked, do you want to go home? Tanya Cross and, or Rosalind Bailey asked her, does she want to go home? And my daughter said yes. And they asked her, does she feel safe to go home? She says, yes, kind of, or, or sort of. And so Tanya Cross uh, interjected and said, it sounds like she just likes visiting with her mother, but she doesn't really want to go home. And so I had to intercede and, and step in and say, you know what, you're putting words in her mouth. That's not what she said. Now, if you go back, I'm going to put an excerpt here from the child custody hearing where the attorney, my children's attorney, actually spoke up, said my daughter cherished wanted to go home. And, and Ms. Kowalski, is, is, do you represent both children or just or, or one of them? Uh, I represent both children, Your Honor. Okay, and your position for today's hearing? Well, with regard to Desmond Ross, I'm in agreement with the motion to terminate temporary, to terminate custody and return him to his mother, and he also is in agreement with that. Um, as far as Cherish Ross is concerned, I did meet with her as well. She is not in agreement with the motion with regards to her. It's a motion for an extension of temporary custody. Um, she wants to go home as well. So she would not be in agreement with that motion today, but Desmond is in agreement. He can't get home fast enough, so I would respectfully request that the court grant the motion with regard to Desmond today and perhaps set the motion with regard to Cherish out for further hearing as there is not agreement on that today. Thank you. My daughter Cherish has been wanting to go home for a long time, but Children and Family Services has been manipulating her mind and trying to make it seem as if she does not want to go home because they want to hold on to her. Now, Elena Phillips, the child therapist, spoke out and said she no longer wants to work with me and do family therapy with me. She claimed that I was bullying her because of all the videos that I posted on YouTube. Now, let me first say this. Bullying is not posting videos exposing the truth on YouTube because I had no one else to speak for me and advocate for me. And this is the only way I can get the truth across and tell my side of the story. That is not bullying. What is bullying is a group of women who take a child out of the home and, and do everything in their power to keep that parent from their child and to manipulate that child. That is bullying. I had no voice or no one to advocate for me. Now, the problem Elena had is with the videos I made about her withholding family therapy. Yes, I did say that because I had spoken to Elena Phillips along with my caseworker Becky Sawyer and asked why was there such a delay. My children were taken out of the home as of February 14, 2020, last year, over a year ago. Now, they did not start family therapy until I think it was July, June or July is when we had family therapy. We had one session. Now ask the question why Elena Phillips claimed that she wanted to make sure that oh my daughter was continuing to make progress and that our sessions wouldn't affect that how was how would I affect that if you claim that there were so many issues between me and my daughter that need to be worked on and that your ultimate goal is reunification don't you think that you would have tried to somehow work on those issues why would it take over a year a year and a half to be exact for you to start having family therapy if there are so many issues that need to be addressed, which I still am not aware of these issues, why is it that it took so long to set up family therapy? No one could give a clear, cohesive reason. They keep making up all these excuses that, oh, uh, Cherish made such progress and that there was a, 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 a our relationship. She was worried about me having individual therapy first. Now, here's the thing. Like I said, everything's so unilaterally done. Even when I was in court, you could hear from the magistrate in the child custody hearing case said that they're two they're the same family with two different motions why is that why is it when two children are taken out of the home they both have two different motions with two different uh plans of what to do two different agendas why is it that family therapy was started right away well not right away probably about six months after when i finally kept urging becky to start doing everything because the ball was rolling very slow in the beginning when they first took my kids out of the house they hadn't even started any services. Matter of fact, when case when Toretta Stores originally worked on this case, when she came to my home, she never offered any of these services. And if you go look at the, the original uh, motion where uh, Jody Madrid asked on there was these services offered, and they said that there wasn't enough time, which was a lie. There was plenty of time. The time that you wasted 
going back and forth asking me why my kids weren't in school was the time you could have been setting up all these services then. They weren't trying to set up any services. She said I had a, a mental um, illness, but she never got me a psychiatric evaluation. She claimed when we were at the hospital with my daughter, she was gonna get me a psychi uh, psychiatric evaluation before taking my kids out of the home. So no one tried to get any services started before taking my kids. And once they were taken, it took about several months for them to even get services started. It took a few months for me to even have a mental health evaluation. They had me do three or four evaluations which they did not give me the diagnosis for. Then they started family therapy with me and my son. That started in November 2020. Now, Elena Phillips again claims that it, it, she was getting so much progress done, it took so much time. So does it take over a year, a year and a half, 14, 15, 16, 17 months for you to actually get so much progress and work done with my daughter. She was so uh, distraught or emotionally messed up. I don't know what, the, what, what it was. No one ever talked to me about any of it. I was never invited to any of the meetings till I went to the first meeting in June. That was the first time they offered me to come to any of the meeting. So like I said, all this was being delayed and I feel it was being delayed intentionally to keep my daughter because this is what they want all along. Now, we're gonna talk about the real reason why my daughter was taken and everything that was covered up to explain why these people wanna keep my daughter. Now. Let's go back to the videos. They had a problem. Uh, Elena Phillips stepped up, talked about the videos. Uh, Teresa Williams had a problem, said that my daughter has a problem with the videos. Now, this is another thing. When um, Elena Phillips would always speak up by my daughter, I would hear how she says, oh, my daughter's learning to speak up for herself. She always would uh, emphasize how she's learning to speak up for herself. And I'm asking the question, speak up for, her, for herself regarding who? Is it her mom or uh, regarding, are you teaching her how to defy her parents' authority? Is it, has she learned how to speak up against everyone? Because it seems like, you all still speak on her behalf. Like I said, Tyre Cross is trying to put words in her mouth when she had already said, yes, she, do wants to, she does want to come home. And then Teresa Williams spoke up in the staff meeting and said, my daughter has an issue with these videos. Why did my daughter say this? If my daughter has learned how to speak up for herself, according to uh, Elena Phillips and all the therapy sessions that you have and over the 16 months of you working with my child, he says she now knows how to speak up for herself. Why couldn't she address everyone at the staff meeting and say herself if she had a problem with the videos? My belief is that you all have a problem with the videos because now all the stuff you're doing when it's being exposed. Now, when I did not have any representation, I asked God to represent me because I had every attorney would not defend me, would not speak up on my behalf. And since all of my voice was being stifled and I could not tell my side of the story, God showed me how to tell my side of the story. He started advocating for me by making me uh, start these videos. So if you have a problem with the videos being made, address God about it because he's the one who gave me the inspiration to make these videos. Now, they say my daughter has learned how to speak up for herself. So if that's the case, my daughter has already stated that she wants to go home. Yet Tanya Cross is now stating that they might have to change their um, uh, motion to ask for permanency because they're saying no one wants to work with me or that I'm still being combative. That's not the point. That's not the, the issue at all. See, what these people like to do is they like everybody to, to, to follow along like a little lap dog while they can do whatever they want, do all the corrupt things they want, make up all the lies and have you run through every hoop and be a little sheep that goes along with everything they say and do not speak up for yourself. I've always been a person to fight for my children. I've been fighting for my children since they've been in school. God has always put that in me. If I see injustice being done, I'm going to call you out on it. I'm not going to just let you have your way and do what you want and lie on me and my children and have your way with them and see that's the problem why everyone says that they don't want to work with me this whole group because I will speak out I don't just go along with it and, and like I said children and family services are very corrupt they have a lot of corrupt people there they lie on these parents they lie on the children they do whatever they want with them and it's like they want to take away your complete rights as a parent they want to have control over your children this is all antichrist spirits that are operating through them because they want to take your children out of the home and force their doctrination on them and corrupt them and do whatever they want they want to take the fact that you the Christian families raise their children up serving God and say, oh, our beliefs are being pushed on them. Since when is uh, a parent who has a certain religion and has their child practice that same religion, a minor child, how's that forcing beliefs on a child? My daughter never said anything that she had a problem with any of the religion. The thing is, they have a problem that I'm exposing my children about the kingdom of darkness. I talk to them about witchcraft. I talk to them about sorcery. I tell them that there are witches here. And as you can see in the Bible, it does talk about it. If you have a problem, you want to debunk the fact that I talk about witchcraft, you want to debunk the fact that witchcraft exists, and you want to say that I have a mental illness because I have these beliefs, then you need to really uh, remove the entire Holy Bible because that talks about witchcraft as well. It talks about how we wrestle against flesh and blood. I'm going to post some scriptures here. It talks about there was a Simon who was a sorcerer who bewitched an entire city. It talked about people having demons cast out of them who were uh, mad and, and that they had healing and deliverance because they had do the laying on of hands. And I told them before that all of these illnesses illnesses on people a lot of times these are just spiritual attacks and what they didn't like the fact was that I'm exposing my children to be aware of the kingdom of darkness see Satan has utilized 
Children Family Services and the entire government as an instrument, a vital instrument to destroy the Christian families. They have taken Jesus Christ out of school. They have put all this homosexuality into our, our media and to everything. You look at it now, they're pushing everything on the children. They can show sorcery and witchcraft in every single movie or cartoon there is. But the moment you speak out about Jesus Christ or God, there's a problem with it. And like I said, all these people who are in Children Family Services, they do not believe in God. They'll say that they're Christians, but you're not a true Christian if you don't have the Holy Spirit inside of you. If you do not have Jesus Christ's spirit, you do not have the Holy Spirit. Now, God already told me that they're going to try and take my children. This is an agenda to remove my daughter out of the home. They already had that plan to keep her. And I'm going to tell you the reason why. Because I spoke up about, if you look at my documentary about why I wanted to end it, I talked about a man by the name of James Franklin Penny III who was performing sorcery on me and who had sexually violated me in the spiritual realm. Now, if you don't think astral projecting um, actually exists, I'm going to post a definition here so you can see it that about astral projecting. Now, I said in my original statement that there was a man, an Illuminati, who was attacking me in my household, who was attacking my family. He had a vendetta against me because God was using me to do work in his kingdom. And this man has come to attack me and he was uh, attacking my children. He caused my daughter to get sick, caused her to have seizures. My, the Lord already showed me that he put some type of demon in her head. This man will come in our home all the time, day and night, will come in and out of our home. They want to say that, oh, I was crazy because these beliefs. What really is they want to conceal it because like I said, this is all part of the Illuminati operating together. Now this man, I'm going to show you some clips here. Now this man would come to me in the middle of the night and I wouldn't see anything. Like I said, I would feel something touching all on me, something I uh, try to have sex with me and doing things. My daughter gave that same, um, she gave that same uh, testimony when she spoke to the um, University Hospitals of Cleveland, the therapists and every the therapist and everyone was there. And as long um, I spoke with the Richmond Heights Police Department, we were there. When we took her to the hospital that night, she was cutting herself. I took her to the hospital because she said she wanted to hurt herself, and I asked her why. And she told me then that the man who was attacking me was attacking her. Now they want to say that all oh, my my beliefs swayed my daughter to feel this way. Now here's the thing: when my daughter first found out about the abuse that was happening to me when we were back in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. I was talking to my mother about it and crying about it and my children saw that. They did not know the details. They just knew that this man was doing things to me and coming and astral projecting in the home and, and sexually violating me. When my daughter gave an instance of what was happening to her, she explained the exact same things that were happening to me in detail. The things that were happening to her. She said she would go into the shower and she would feel someone touching on her breast. No one was there. She would feel people touching on her. She would lay down at night, feel something climbing on top of her and someone violating her. It felt like someone was touching her genitals. These are the same things that I experienced and this is why they're trying to cover it up they want to say that I'm mentally ill but we're going to go back and ask Becky Sawyer what was the diagnosis of all the the the, the uh, mental health evaluation that she had me take because they had me take three of them one of them was from the court the very first one I took was from the court and they did not give me the results so they said they cannot release that I am the client who took this evaluation yet you cannot release this information to me why is that? that that's a good question that you could say make an accusation and slander my name and say i'm mentally ill and have all this 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 information and, and require that i have therapy and take my children out of the home yet you cannot tell me what that diagnosis is they did not give me a diagnosis to i went to ohio guys which was several months after they had taken my children out of the home and she said it was adjustment disorder adjustment disorder to what my kids being taken out of the home what was the original diagnosis for you to take my kids in the first place? When Toretta Store sat there in court and slandered me and said I looked like I had a mental illness that was preventing me from taking my children to school. None of this was happening. All this was fabricating. This is why they're trying to hold on to my children. Now, my daughter would talk to me on the phone and text me back and forth. She told me that the sexual abuse was still happening while she was in foster care. So you took my kids out of the home to, to prevent this abuse from happening, yet she was still happen having it when she first went to her first foster care home. When she went to her first foster care home in Canton, Ohio, she texted me on the phone, and I've been trying to pull up those text messages since, and they're still loading because they've done something in, in the spiritual realm to keep those sex messages blocked. But I went to Richmond Heights Police Department and you can ask them. I went there when my daughter texted me and said that he was still touching her and violating her. She still felt things touching her at night while she was at her foster care home. And I went to the police department and told them. I went to Richmond Heights Police Department. They told me at that time, you have to go to Canton, Ohio. She asked me where my daughter was at. I said, she's in a foster home in Canton, Ohio. They said, well, you have to contact your caseworker or and have her contact the police in Canton. That's exactly what they told me. They said there was nothing that they could do, even though I I had originally filed a police report with them when my daughter was in the hospital right before they took me out of the home. I was at University Hospitals of Cleveland. I had filed a police report then. So I called Becky on the phone that same day. I was very upset. I said, you know what? My daughter's still being abused while she's in foster care. She contacted me and I said, you need to call the police and let them know this is still happening. 
Becky did not do that. She said she would call her supervisor and have her call me. She never did. Guess what she did? She actually had my daughter placed on medication. They had her drugged so she could not talk and tell the truth of what was going on. And that's the same medication where I put up in the video um, when I talked about Teresa Williams, how it was making her high and dizzy. They were all trying to cover it up for this man. That is the truth here. And so this is what they're trying to do. They're trying to set up and conspire to keep my kid out of the home because this man has already stated himself. He has attached himself to my soul somehow, which I asked God to stop. And he has placed, put, continuously put demons inside me that have actually spoken out about his plans, that he said I was his wife and all these things. This man is very sick. Okay. I had been praying for him. The churches that I contact him and help me pray for them. I was involved with one church, but they actually gave up. Now he has said that my daughter, he was going to marry her even though he was molesting her, that she's going to be his wife. Now, this is what they're trying to cover up, the abuse of a minor child, the abuse of me. It was, even though it was done in the spiritual realm, it is still abuse. Now, even though I can't go back and find those text messages that my daughter sent me about getting touched and having the sex, spiritual sexual molestation occur while she was at her uh, first foster care home, I do have a uh, text message that was exchanged between me and my daughter because she asked me why she was there and she felt very depressed and upset and was talking about how she hated her life. She was telling me how she felt, you know, just suicidal about being there. Now, this is going to debunk the fact what Toretta Storrs uh, testified in court and made a bunch of lies and allegations. She appeared in court with uh, her supervisor, Kelly Kodidic, which I'm going to be posting here. And they all stated that, well, she stated that I was not meeting my children's educational needs, that they were missing days, and that um, I withdrew them from school as of October 26, 2019, did not have them in any appropriate school settings since then, and I failed to cooperate with the schools to resolve any of the issues and the effects that my children's absences were having on their education. Now, all of these were blatant lies because, for one, my daughter was having seizures. She had multiple seizures a day, and the school kept sending her to the hospital. She could not get any education that way. She's having eight or nine seizures a day, and they would call the ambulance, and they would have her transported to the hospital. So what we came to the agreement was that my daughter could stay home until a medical plan was written for her by her doctor. And at that time, the doctor was refusing to write a medical plan until there was a procedure. He wanted to do some type of videography on her brain, which was scheduled at the end of um, November. And this was something I told Toretta stories about. So they left my child at home and they would send uh, sporadically send home homework with her uh, brother. And due to my son being bullied, I felt that my daughter wasn't getting the education this way. And I felt that because of the issues we had in the past with the school, Richmond Heights local school district. If you want to know about those issues again, watch my video about, about exposing the Richmond Heights local school district. I had made the decision to remove my children from school. And, and it's not that I did not have them in school. They were in school. Toretta Storrs did come out to the house and she received proof that my children were enrolled in a subscription-based Christian program through Monarch. And so they were attending school. She came back to me after confirming everything. She came back to me two, three weeks later and said that the school was not accredited and that I myself needed to put them in an accredited school. So I had to withdraw my children from school and there was a huge delay because I tried to enroll my kids in an accredited online school called QDA and Richmond Heights Local School District was not released in the academic record. So I was trying to cooperate. They were withholding the records um, so my kids could not get into school. That was the delay. And there was a testimony in court back in September where uh, one of the representatives or directors for QDA had actually said that that was one of the things that they were waiting on, which actually prolonged the enrollment for school. So Toretta Storrs lied on all of these um, instances and made it seem like I was a neglectful parent who did not have my kids in school and who was not trying to get them in school, which all of that was lies. Now, like I said, the original reason why my child, uh, my children were taken out of the home is because of the abuse against my daughter. So I'm going to post here a text message where she asked me a question and I'm going to be reading it while it's on the screen because I have it up here. Um, it says here, if you're looking at the screen, she said, I hate my life because she was asking me why she's here. She asked me, why am I here? And we went back and forth um, looking at, I, I really didn't want to explain to her again because they had already said that I was crazy and made all these instances up, even though they, they claimed to believe me when I was at the staffing meeting with Kelly Kodidic, Toretta Storrs, and uh, Tanya Cross and uh, some other people. I don't remember who else was there, but it was just me in there and they were stating, I had told them all about this and they said they believed me, but since uh, this James Penny person had made me a target, they felt that, that it wouldn't be good for my children to be in the home around him since I was that target. Although this them removing my daughter, as you, it did not stop the abuse from happening. So my daughter had contacted me because she was very upset. She wanted to go home and she was asking questions and I explained to her why. 
I explained to her that the social worker, Toretta Stores, had actually fabricated all these lies and made it seem like I was a neglectful parent to cover up the real reason why my children were sent home. I had even made a, a post on uh, my WordPress page. I have a WordPress blog, and I made a post about Illuminati took my children right after this happened, and Toretta herself, herself, Toretta Stores herself went to the website and um, actually read this entire blog and then used, uh, extracted certain pieces of it to use in my case plan. And when she had alleged against, um, had an alleged defense against me or why they were taking my kids out of the home. So yes, as you can see here, my daughter did state here that she was being raped by James Franklin Penny III. So even though he was astral projecting out of his body or whatever he was doing, I don't really know exactly how he does it, but I know the Holy Spirit uh, uh, had revealed to me what was being done because you cannot do evil and expect it not to be revealed. When God knows something that's going on, he's going to He's going to expose it. You can't cover it up and hide it for long. This man had bewitched me, done all kinds of things, trying to make me like him and fall in love with him. And, you know, all these things had happened. So, like I said, this is all the proof and this is the evidence and the real reason why Children and Family Services removed my children from the home. Now, they have all conspired together to keep my kid out of the home. Now, they're saying and making it seem like, oh, it's because I'm not willing to cooperate with them, which I've cooperated with everything. Everything they told me to do, I've jumped through every hoop, even though they wrongfully took my children. I took the parenting classes. I've gone to all the family therapy sessions with my son. I had my individual therapy, even though the therapist had complaints or problems saying she can't uh, engage with me. I comply with every single thing. I've had visitations with my kid. Everything was done on my behalf. They're just trying to come up with more excuses so they can keep my kid because like I said, they're covering up for this Satanist and Illuminati. They're all a part of Illuminati and this is their whole game. Not only that, they get paid for keeping these kids. They do this to a lot of children. They have taken many children and families out of the home. They have attacked the brains of mothers and families and say, oh, they have a mental illness. A lot of time these parents are fine until a children and family services gets involved and uses sorcery. God has already shown me that they're using sorcery in the schools. They're using sorcery in the therapists and the rehabilitation centers because this is the whole game. If you don't have any sick people, how are you going to keep your business running? My daughter's therapist had talked about having such a heavy caseload of, I think, over 100 some clients. Why is it that one person has this many clients? Why are so many people ill? These people are not ill. Like I said, these are spiritual attacks. If people will open their eyes to the demonic realm, to the occult realm, you would know that these are spiritual attacks. And all you need is deliverance. All you need is to pray and go into spiritual warfare and have the blood of Jesus pled over your brain and your mind. That is what I did. I didn't have to take any medication for anything. And when you know these spiritual attacks are coming upon you, you know that these attacks are coming from the enemy. They want to make it seem like our children are, 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 are messed up or incapable of performing. Like I said, my kids were fine when they were at home. If you go back and look at all my um, videos where I exposed the school system, my children were fine when they're at home. It's when they got in school that they started having erratic behavior or uh, ADHD problems or attention deficit problems where they could not focus or they could not concentrate and they could not learn well. This is because the schools are using sorcery to attack them. My son complained daily about having headaches, headaches, and the Lord was telling me himself, the Holy Spirit was revealing to me that they were attacking his frontal lobe. So don't tell me that they cannot do spiritual attacks on people and cause their brains to, to be messed up. They're doing it all the time. Why do you think people go to therapy? They have therapy for years and they don't get any better. They're just going to continue to go to therapy, paying that their insurance, keep paying it, getting medications that's not helping them. Well, you can go to God and get deliverance and be healed and healthy and whole. He doesn't charge you anything. But see, that's the thing they want to do. They want to they keep you in a bondage so they can keep their money coming in. So that's what all these organizations have joined forth to do. And I'm revealing it now because you're not going to hold my kids. You're not going to lie and call something to happen and then hold my kids and hold me accountable for something that someone else has done. And what God is going to do now, he's going to start taking you all apart and investigating and stripping you of everything. Your license, your, 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 everything you do, everything you have, he's going to remove it from you now. Because you're not going to continue to keep holding his children. This is the kingdom of darkness fighting against the kingdom of light. And they pray mostly at their Christian families, anointed children, children who are anointed by God, children who are who households are filled with people who are walking in the Holy Spirit. They're attacking them. So I'm asking you to open your eyes and get discernment because this is something that is happening. Now, that is the real reason why that they think they're going to take my children out of here. Now, if there's saints watching this, I urge you to please pray for us. My daughter has a court case on September 10th where they said they're going to now change it to ask to keep her permanently. This is something they already want to do because Becky came to me several months ago at one of the visitations about a few months ago, she said, well, we were thinking uh, we have a TSI program where we can keep her till she's 18 years old. Why do you want to keep my daughter till she's 18? Why do you want to separate her from her family? You already said that I was making progress. What is it that you want to hold my daughter for? 
Children and Family Services still has not asked that question. My daughter has stated m numerous times that she wants to go home, and you're going against her wishes. Her own attorney has spoken in court that she wants to go home. She says she wants to go home. There was never an issue with me, her mother. There was an issue with the sorcerer who was attacking our family, who you all never did anything about. So that is what is being revealed. And if you think you're going to keep my kids, guess what? God has something for you. I already said he's going to feed you with your flesh. You want to continue to fight? You're not fighting against me. I'm not the one exposing you. God is. He knew everything you were doing. That's why he allowed this to happen. He knew what you were doing for, for decades since Children and Family Services has been going on. You've been taking children out of the houses and taking them, trying to strip them of their identity and their 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 every their culture. This happened, like I said, with the Indians. They started with them until they got this type of um, act to go where they cannot do that anymore. They were stripping them out of their homes and trying to, to, to erase their Indian culture and try to indoctrinate them with the, the culture of the Caucasian man, with American culture. They were Americanizing them, what they claim. So now they're doing it with Christian families and um, black children. And they're doing it, and now they have their, 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 their yes-men, these, these modernized uh, slave masters, the, the house slaves, which you would call the black people who have gone along with it, with the agenda that the white man has put them on so they can get their little uh, paycheck. They're still working as a slave for the white man because this was the agenda that was brought forth by the white man when he first put slavery upon the African-American race. He first put slavery on them and put them in bondage and captivity. Now there is a stronghold that's operating through this that's causing these people to behave this way. So Toretta Storrs and Tanya Cross and Rosalind Bailey are all being slaves for the white man by oppressing these children and lying and keeping them and taking them out of the homes. And this is something that God is going to deal with because for those of you who think that, oh, it's just the white man he's coming after. No, when you are putting your own people in captivity, and you're following the way of the white man, God is going to deal with you. He abhors that. And his, and, 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 and his eyes as an abomination, and he abhors you. You are worse than the white man himself. You are worse than Satan himself, the enemy. Because what you are doing is an abomination. It's just like Abimelech, who killed all of his brothers so he could take over his father's empire and kingdom. You are putting your own people in bondage just so you can have a paycheck for yourselves. And guess what? You are now going to deal with him. You are going to deal with God. So if you think that you're going to keep my kids and take them out of this home and you think that you're going to come back because I already know what you're conspiring with Desmond, even though Desmond is home, God has shown me that Children Family Services is plotting to take them back out of here. They want to set something up and cause something to happen and say, oh, I can't take care of my neglect. And they're trying to cause things to happen. And I have to fight and pray daily. These are spiritual attacks that they're trying to release at me and my family. And everything you do, everything you try to cause to happen, God knows about it. And you will be accountable for it. So do not think that you're going to escape judgment. Thank you. Jail. It's already there. I go to jail. I can make her hate your ass. 
you gonna turn on you again. Don't you not like bullshit? I should stay here fucking fighting. You don't have to be smooth. You have nothing with men. You ragged You don't even belong here. I do. Fight your own house, you fucking freeloader. Go to your poor motherfucking husband. He's out there fucking all these women. What kind of pastor is he? He can't keep his dick in Lord God, what kind of God are you to bring my daughter to a damn sickness and keep putting games in my daughter? What kind of God are you that you don't give a fuck about my daughter? That you call a whore that you love this damn man boy you love my child? And you keep saying that we don't love you. What kind of God are you? To keep letting this man put demons in Sabbath that you ordain her to go to hell, but you want him to go to heaven. You hear what Satan is saying? You don't give a damn about us. You don't care about my daughter. This bastard's still in my damn house doing shit. Why are you doing the shit that you're doing? This is his house, bitch. He's not going anywhere. This ain't his house. This is his fucking house. This ain't his house. This sorry ass want to come give him no damn money. This is not his house. because he wants her to be bound. She ain't going to be bound. Please complete submission to him no, before she not. he does anything for No, she's not. No, she's not. No, she's not. No, she's not. It's going to be in his back and call. No, she's not going to be in his back and call. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to press damn charges because he's harassing her. And you are too, you bastard. He's going to finish it. Your fucking guy released him on her. No. And he's going to give him the fuck off. He's going to give him the fuck off. Now you sit in that damn You're not going to get in the middle of their fucking marriage. I'm in the middle of that. I ain't no damn marriage. She's my child. I gave birth to her. That is their marriage. She's my child. I ain't no damn ordained marriage. It's a fucking marriage. No, it's not. And she God can remove the shit. She he gonna remove it. She don't belong to him. She does. She don't. She is his fucking she property now. She's not his she damn is property. His black slave and whore. She's not you a slave and whore. You That's shut what up. He has her for his slave and his fucking whore. He's gonna tell her to suck cock and dick every night. He's gonna make her go out and perform orgies with him and fuck all his other male fucking sorcerer friends. That's what the fuck he's gonna call your daughter to fucking do. She's gonna be a whore for him. She's gonna fuck everybody she tells her to get that fucking power. Who do you think they do to these women? They have no control. They're sex slaves. And he's gonna turn your daughter to a fucking sex slave. That's what he's gonna make her. And the first person he's gonna have her fuck is his fucking brother. You're a dumb bitch. And you are a You let your fucking God give your daughter off to that man. I don't let God do shit. He did the fuck. I didn't know about it. You, you said he ordained. You still allowed it. I didn't allow shit. You had a choice and you allowed it. What was my choice? And you accepted him mm. as her fucking mate. I accept that man as her mate. You're damn lie. Accept Y'all it. motherfuckers ordained that shit while I was alone. Came along. Well, it's too late now. You did that dirty shit. Ain't nothing too late. My son's gonna make her suffer. I don't care. I'm sorry to tell everything and I'm tired of it. We don't have to take that kind of treatment. We do not have to accept that. We don't have to accept this. Now we don't have to accept this. Now what you put in her life, you need to respect her and take her right. And he has not respected her. Now move his hands upon her. Or you want to take her with you, take her with you. Because you should have given her a decision and let her make her will first. They just throw her to somebody like she's somebody's dog. And he treats her in a kind of way. You don't love us. Doing this to us, that is not love. And we won't accept your cheap ass love that you give, what you've done to us. We don't have to accept no man like that in our family. We don't have to. We don't have to accept the man that molested the mother, the daughter, break the daughter, damn molest the damn granddaughter. We don't have to take that. And he got a lot of nerve talking, so respect him. But he is degrading. Ask you to deal with him and move his hands up off of her. He had no right controlling and destroying her brain. He had no right doing these things. I had with you interfered in my marriage. He had no right doing these things. And Lord God, a woman's gonna be respected just like a man is. And he is not respected like that once. 
He did not respect her 11, 12 years ago when he came into her house and raised her to submit to me. He is not respecting her at all. He is not respecting her at all. And you want to give a good woman to a dirty man? You want me to hurt you again? Huh? And I'm calling you and I'm asking you to deal with him. Obviously, you seem like you have a control over him. Now deal with him. I want him dealt with. Move his hands apart. But does he taking that picture of that? Stand over him and take that. Because we're going to show the church and try. And we're going to start contacting other people. You won't have a damn ministry. Because I'm just sick of you hurting my daughter. And she sits up in one room on the floor, sleeping on the floor. And this is what you've done to her. We don't care what he's going to do. We don't even want him anymore. He's been so despicable. There's it's nothing that's forgivable for that. None of that is forgivable. None of that is forgivable. How you can forgive a filth and abominations he has done, but you can't forgive us who have done not much of anything, and but you want to blame us and accuse us for what our Egyptian ancestors have done, but you want to hold us and nail us to the cross compared to the things he himself has done, which we haven't done. He want to force us to serve you, but praise him on his abominations, his rapes, his killings, and everything else that he has done. She don't have to accept being nobody's whore. Yes, yeah, if you have it on there, say it. Stand over here and show that. Quick, stand over there and show that. Stand in front and show it. This is what I'm doing. This is what we've had to go through with. For two, three years, two years since he sent us down to Pennsylvania fighting and dealing with this man, the sorcerer. And now he's up here doing this, attacking her brain. He's done it several times. He has done deep sorcery. We had some people helping us, but they gave up because they felt he should have been in jail, in the jail, for what he had done already. God has mercy on him, but he hasn't had mercy on us. We're the one putting up with the pain and his mess. You don't force somebody to marry some damn body who messes with your mother and your damn daughter. And then go out and leave who he pleases. That means he belittles you. And we're tired of being belittled. I'm tired of my daughter being belittled and mistreated. I'm tired of God hurting and mistreating my daughter and giving her to this man to mistreat her and hurt her as well. Back up, Gary. Get the camera out of my face. And save it. Back up, Desmond. I'm gonna save you. Okay, save it, save it. Put the camera away. <clears throat> Put it away. You tell him to get that camera out of my face. Get it out of my face. I want the camera out of here. That's my wife. You have no business interfering in anything. What happens in my marriage is none of your fucking business. That's my marriage. That's my wife. She's supposed to do what the fuck I say. She's supposed to honor me, respect me, submit to me. She has not done any of it. And you ain't did what you're supposed to have done. The word of God says love your wife as you love yourself. Mm -hmm. You have never given her a dollar. God told you to fix up that bank account you messed up. God told you to buy her car. God told you to pay rent in her house. You've done nothing. God told you to give her money. You screwed up my account. You screwed up my jobs. You did everything to this family. Everything but good. But you want to call her your wife. You ain't never walked down the damn street with her, but you want to call her your wife. But you go out and take women, take them across the damn country, and spend money on them, give money to suck your dick, and give money to get your nails in, but you never gave my daughter a damn dollar. But you want to call her your wife. But you want to ask her to reject and lay with her in the damn bed, and mistreat her, and dog her, and belittle her. That's the kind of damn God we supposed to serve? Of accepting this shit? We don't have to accept the shit that you dish out to us. You got that take this? You accept whatever I give you. No, we don't. I we don't have to. Now, Lord God, you're supposed to honor me. If he ain't doing right, move him on. 
He's not doing like right. I said, she's lucky to have me. She don't want your trifling ass don't white know rapist deal with these serial killer ass. Her a man children. wanted her. You came don't in and you took her from her husband by raping her. Children, when she was getting ready to be she married. So what? Old. That man who's security guard wanted her and her children. He, he was a we don't want you. Boss. So what? He still wanted her. You the damn loser. He has no fucking money. You're the loser. We don't need your one fucking money. We know how to work for our money. Well, why don't you have anything? We didn't have to, you came and did the shit. No, he didn't. You know, God told you to pay back what you did. He told you to pay you penance. No money, no he said money. to pay penance. Yeah, absolutely. We don't want you. You're poor. You're so poor. what? That's okay. Can't take care of yourself. That's why hell he wants y'all. Because y'all on your way to hell. She can barely feed her children. So what? You need me. She we don't we need you. She and we don't want you. She needs me. We don't need you. We, do. we don't need you. Can't take care of yourself. We don't need you. I'm taking care of yeah. myself. Fucking welfare is taking care of you, bitch. Damn right. Oh, owe to us. You owe us everything. You rapist. You're living in my people's home. You're a fucking rapist. And they, if they know who the fuck you truly were, maybe they don't want your ass. You married a rapist. They don't want you. you married a rapist. They don't want you. None of them. I'm a pedophile. None of them and want you. Sexual. Everything you say about me. And that's you. Fucking married. And that's you. And you see, married. that's what my daughter said. She never wanted anybody like her damn father. And you're like her father. You're just like her damn father. Everything and there's some more. I can never be like him. I yes, you are. You I just work. like him. I work for a living and I take care and of And you don't take care of her the same damn way. But he the same way the fuck. You're right. He, he didn't take care, care of us. You're right. My wife doesn't have to do anything for me. But you ain't doing nothing for her either. Now, you're just as worse. You got money. You ain't shit. She has to earn that money. It doesn't she come got her enough. You she got to have this putting her with him. When her her guy had this putting her with him. That's what I'll do Lord for her. She has to earn her with him. When he mistreats her. And you're wrong. You're wrong. You had no business putting her with him. Earn it, bitch. Your mother's a bitch. Go sit up there and molest my granddaughter. I'll molest you. And you done already done it. And the rest of the. I know. You I know you will. This is why I shouldn't be with. I know you are. I know you are. Because that's you. That's you. Because you need to be. I don't know why God uh, even have mercy on you. It's your fault it happened. You kill over 100 damn women and he have a mercy on your ass. It's your fault it happened. It ain't my fault. You're being punished. It ain't my fault. You killed you over a hundred damn women. That's why the crunch said your ass should have been in that cell. That's why the crunch call you a fucking monster. You are a damn monster. You are. I hate your ass. You should have been burnt with fucking goddamn acid. Acid should have been poured on your ass. That's how I feel about you. You're worse than any man God has ever picked to be at my door. You're worse than the bums that she has ever been with. You are worse. You are despicable. You feel so fucked up about your damn self that you want to attack other people. Can't take this off the nerves. You're a loser to your damn self. That's how you want people want to please people. You're a fucking loser. That's why he's taking them women all over the place trying to prove Yeah, because he's a fucking loser. Right. He don't love his own damn self. Prove something. Yeah, prove you sorry ass bitch. Weak ass motherfucker.